For regular videos on ancient cultures and forgotten civilizations, please subscribe. Another piece of evidence Alexander presents has to do with the Dogon people, an ethnic group from the Mali region of West Africa. He says that the Dogon have scientific knowledge they must have gotten from an ancient advanced civilization. Alexander says, it is believed that for eons, the Dogon had known that Sirius was a binary star system, where two suns are orbiting around each other, Sirius A and Sirius B. Obviously, with the naked eye, this is impossible to notice. The Dogon further knew that it takes 50 years for one orbit to complete. You would need fine astronomical equipment to pick this up, which the Dogon certainly did not have. He appears to be getting his views from Robert Temple's book, The Sirius Mystery, published in 1976, but Temple got it from an earlier source. The idea that the Dogon people have unusual advanced knowledge goes back to the writings of a French anthropologist, Marcel Griot, who studied the Dogon from 1931 until his death in 1956. In the first half of this period, until about 1948, Griot's work was largely descriptive, and other anthropologists think his publications from this period are genuinely valuable. But in 1948, he published a book that made quite a splash among the general public. In this book, and in subsequent ones, he wrote about Dogon mythology, which he obtained from interviews he had with Dogon people. And he used this mythology and its symbols to try to extrapolate far-reaching conclusions about special knowledge and higher concepts the Dogon people had, which definitely raised some eyebrows. In 1965, after his death, another book was released, co-authored by Griol and his student, Germain Dieterlin. Famous ancient astronaut theorist Eric von Daniken latched onto these works, especially the parts about the star Sirius and an ark that descended from heaven to argue for the existence of ancient aliens. And of course, Robert Temple built upon this. So as you can see, Alexander's ideas are going back to Temple and von Daniken, who were drawing on Griot and Dieterlin. But in anthropology, as in other sciences, Peer review and replication are important parts of the progress of knowledge. And so another study was done. You see, Griot's construction of Dogon culture was so far removed from what other anthropologists had found over the years in the region that a re-study was needed in order to figure out why his work was such an anomaly. So, in the late 1970s and early 1980s, a team led by Walter Van Beek, consisting of members of various disciplines, including geography, physical anthropology, social anthropology, and archaeology, returned to the area in an attempt to replicate Griol's findings. Van Beek says that despite systematic attempts to replicate Griol's conclusions, what he found was contradictory to it. Among his findings, the Dogon know no proper creation myth, neither the version of Ogotameli, the person interviewed by Griol, nor that of the Renard Pale, is recognizable to informants. The figure of Ogo, RP, is unknown. The fox, as a divining animal, has no privileged position in mythology. These are all parts of Griol's mythology. That Sirius is a double star is unknown. Astronomy is of very little importance in religion. Dogon society has no initiatory secrets beyond the complete mastery of publicly known texts. The supernatural world of the Dogon is more diverse and much more vague, ambivalent, and capricious than represented in D.E. or R.P., Griot's books. The role of ancestors in Dogon religion is limited. They are not identified with other supernatural beings. The Binu cannot be considered ancestors and do not occupy a central position in mythology or ritual. The water spirit Nomo is not a central figure in Dogon thought and has none of the characteristics of a creator or a redeemer. Symbolism in Dogon religion is restricted and fragmented, carried by ideas and objects sometimes quite removed from the ones mentioned in Griot's writings. Now, of course, it could be said that just because Van Beek's team could not replicate what Griot had found, this doesn't automatically mean Griot was wrong. That's true but it does mean that his findings so far have not been replicated. Moreover, keep in mind that Alexander is using Temple's ideas, not Griol's. According to Griol, the Dogon didn't believe that Sirius was merely a double star. He said they believed there was a third, smaller body there, too. And that doesn't check out. Alexander explains this discrepancy away by saying, The Dogon knew that there are other objects in the Sirius star system much smaller than Sirius A and B. 
There is until now no conclusive scientific proof of its existence. Our technical equipment is as yet not advanced enough to confirm or deny this. So, he is willing to believe that the Dogon are right about the third star, and that scientists just haven't found it yet. But you can't establish the Dogon belief as in harmony with science by saying that science has yet to confirm their belief. Alexander also makes this statement. Further, the Dogon knew that the one star, Sirius B, is actually a white dwarf star. They describe the dwarf star as the smallest thing but also the heaviest. The Dogon description of this actually brings the matter to the point much better than our lengthy explanations. He credits the Dogon with knowing about white dwarf stars because they say that Sirius B is the smallest thing but also the heaviest. That's not the same as knowing what a white dwarf is. He tries to gloss over this by suggesting that their simple explanation is superior to a scientific one. Astronomer and astrophysicist Noah Broch points out in his book Serious Matters that in 1893, an expedition of French astronomers stayed with the Dogon for five weeks in order to observe a solar eclipse. And so it is very possible that some transfer of astronomical knowledge from them to the Dogon could have occurred at this time. So even if the Dogon did pass on to Griol some accurate astronomical knowledge, it may have been something they learned recently. Alexander admits that scholars explain that some of the information that the Dogon and other tribes possess was obtained through cultural contamination, meaning they came in contact with travelers from Europe and picked up some of their ideas. In answer to this, Alexander says, however, there are other African cultures who have the same ancient knowledge about the star Sirius that was held long before the arrival of the white man and his telescopes in Africa, but he doesn't say who. What cultures? Where are the ones that show that they knew about it long before the arrival of the white man? I don't know of any documents from West Africa that come from before the arrival of the white man that say any such thing. So what are you talking about? Alexander thinks that cultural contamination is far less plausible than that this ancient knowledge that the Dogon and other West African cultures may have may stem from a previously highly developed civilization 11,000 years ago. I guess 11,000 years of oral transmission of information is more reliable than 100 years of oral transmission. 